So just with a different shoe. 
Yo, I was almost shot, baby. Why hyper? What one? But any Crocs? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Love you. Hey, boy, go tell him. Can boy. You know yourself. <laughs> You're so shady. Yeah. He might give me GPS. Wow. Hey, I'm not done. And the time that's lie is that I call my police. Yeah, it's in this affair. I'm not done past. Ouch! In time, we're gonna go insta. Umbali beauty. Fine, babe. Get that one. Sana, I feel like the foundation you're going home. It's giving the patchy. I kid you not. It's giving very much the patchy. Sana, the foundation you're going home. Was it what's her? Some luck in the back. I don't give a what someone, someone say. Finally got my friends in the back on my roller. We gon' make it big one day. We gon' make it big, I say. We gon' make it big, just stay. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and I've seen, I've seen your Clarence content. Literally, I think by far the best Clarence content. <laughs> Way too many heartbreaks still on your mind Let the flame burn down for a while Let the frame blur out for a while Stay in the moment Stay in the moment with me Give you a moment to Give you a moment with me Smell all the roses Smell all the roses with me Sana, my shoes. My friend, these shoes are the ghetto. Yes. Yes, yeah, the ghetto. Ghetto shoes I've ever worn in my life. My friend, I was limping out of the event. Let me tell you, limping. I hope they didn't embarrass you. Sana. I was chilling. I was sitting with... There was a few familiar faces. Um, Yandiva. Yeah, I was chilling with... Ubonolo. Yeah, Manu Bonolo. Yeah. As well as Umpumi and U... Ayanda Vana. So I just need to text my helper. Guys, ew, ew, what is that? So, the event isn't actually finished, but I had to leave early. I have to need, need to rush back. Yo, what is that? Ew, guys, I need to change my shoe also because Sana, that boot 
was eating into my soul. You, let me go pay for this parking. Quick, quick, I'll be right back. Right back. Okay, let's go, guys. You know what I've realized? I'm still too far back. I've realized, guys, that and was went to silk press because then uh, I literally straightened my hair like my leave out this morning because I washed it. I didn't wash my whole sewing because I didn't have time. I just washed my leave out and straightened it before starting work this morning. But Sana, now it's puffy again. Did I even introduce this vlog, my Betunan? Did I? Probably not. Hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to a new video. Welcome to a new vlog. If you are new here, my name is Zizi. We do lifestyle content on this channel. And every now and again, we do beauty related videos, um, girl chat. So that's the type of vibe we So I hope you stay. Also, I do have a personal finance education channel called Money and Purpose. I will link it either here in the cards or in the description box. So, yeah, subscribe to that channel as well. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to promise and say but I've been posting content. Uh, but you know what? Maybe by the time I post this vlog, there'll be content. If I did post a video um, between now and me posting this vlog on my personal finance channel, I will link it like here. <laughs> and you'll see the thumbnail but if not it's way lele way lele but yeah the client event is done now it was quite short shame i was here for like less than two hours it was quite short but i need to go back sana but why am i being blocked off in done? Yes. <laughs> Whose car would it be, sir? Thank you. Um, I think you want to check my keys, but and the bang I mean if Benza will buy more Benza be handy. You know, not even J M C T S. You know, bo posh. <laughs> I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. Badly more them. But actually, actually, the gag is that this is actually not my car. This is actually my husband's car. Well, I guess it's my car because you know everything that's his is mine. You don't get into AI, KAM. Drive safety. There we go. This is actually my husband's car, guys. And because I do not like my car anymore, and my husband absolutely refuses for me to upgrade my car he lets me drive this car and he drives the not so nice car so i actually have a hyundai i10 that i bought when i was like 22 years old <laughs> i'm like i've been driving this that car for like what seven years now um so that's my i don't even know what to do here you know guys let's chat when i get home because this camera is just gonna fall because i don't have a, a man so let's chat like when i get home yeah okay bye Smell the roses. Smell the roses I think I think I say I say I think I say I think I say I say Congratulations to him. Congratulations. Love it for him. Love it for him. I need I need to think. 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 I I'm ordering my dinner and I'm ordering popcorns and wine. <laughs> Girl, dinner. You must make that TikTok. 
up, we paused it. <laughs> that is giving girl dinner. Girl dinner. <laughs> I'm having a set. I don't even have an appetite. Ukwaita? She ghosted me, Sana. What she's supposed to come visit you today? Eh, we. Sana. Maybe we can end up there, okay, Sana? Indota Festa, okay? Friends first, team Fundo first, but Indota Festa. I agree. <laughs> you can't even be mad. I can't even be mad, Sana. <laughs> Cannot be mad. <sighs> I find one thing about you, you're always in your office, like all the time. Because my friend, I'm always the working. The other don't exist. The other rooms in my house don't exist? Hey. Don't be, I'm always working, my friend. It's actually so sad. Sad. Let me tell you something. Yes, I should actually just start praying about this, my friend, because... I actually don't know, like, what's the right thing to do, you know? Yeah. Uh, I agree, my friend. You have to pray about it, Stan. Yeah. Yeah. Refilwe is sneaky way. Sneaky, yes. Sneaky way is refilwe. Ure mo filwe is simniki way. Yeah, na simniki way. I'm a total mark what is what I am. What's wrong? Why are you whining? Girl dinner. Flip. Yes, Lendi on Gamamela's meeting in Goku, a car was a sacum bull bound seven team. And you can't ask it. Yeah. You can't ask because of And I think I made a note of it somewhere, but I'm decided born in Gokulendo. Flip. Yo. And the thing is, the deadline is today. <laughs> the deadline is today, my friend. And like, I have to, I have to finish this thing in the next hour or two and send it. I'm texting. Baby, days will feel like months. Sana is already 10 past 12. 10 past 4. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. In the hour. Good morning, guys. Good morning. I need something for my lips. Sana. Is it a bit dim? I hope it's not dim. And I hope you can see me properly. You, you. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Welcome back. In fact, I'm not even entering this vlog because I think I introed it already. But good morning, guys. Today is Sunday. Um, it's just after twelve, and I didn't go to church this morning because I had to wake up and do some work. I was actually supposed to do this work is Zolo, but then the Tlacelo has a period pains. Like, a period pains is something that I have not experienced in like over two years. Um, so I couldn't work. Literally, my day after those period pains literally attacked me while I was trying to cook my husband brunch. My day went down. So I literally didn't do any work yesterday, but I woke up like super early this morning. At like four o'clock. Woke up at four a.m. this morning to do some work. I'm still not done, but I had committed to my friend that I was gonna go out with her for brunch, not brunch, lunch, and then we're gonna go and watch the Barbie movie. This is actually to celebrate her birthday because when her birthday happened last month, Sana, my life was in shambles. So I'm trying to be a good friend, trying to do better. Um, so we're gonna go and celebrate her today. Um, this is Ukaza. You guys might remember her. She's been in my vlog a couple of times. But I'm quickly gonna get ready. I only have like maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I have 15 minutes before she gets here. She's gonna pick me up because I still don't have a driver's license. Um, 
and I'm gonna quickly do my makeup. And I just thought, you know what? While I do my makeup, let me do a small and yeah, a live update Q and A because I did like a ask me anything <laughs> within reason um, Q and A thing um, on Instagram that I was gonna film a video for on YouTube. But as you know what? As it is, I struggle to put out a vlog every single week. Let me not be overly ambitious by thinking I can put out like an additional video to a vlog. So let me just include this in a vlog. So I'm going to do, I'm going to answer those questions while I do this very basic makeup look. I just thought, you know what, for a change, my baby, I'm to always be looking like a Samaritan woman. And so I feel like I always look like a Samaritan woman. Like 90% of the time, I don't look good at all, at all. But today we're making a bit of an effort. <laughs> okay. Um. So the, the okay. Uh. I feel like this is a bit dim. Is it not dim, guys? Man, let me just brighten it a little. Did that make a difference? I don't know. Should I open the curtain? Mm -mm, that's too bright. Okay. You know what? <laughs> it's a vlog. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. This question says, are you getting the lax bag, Sana? I'm on the edge of my seat. <laughs> yeah. So I have been considering buying a um, designer bag for my birthday. I had initially um, planned to get the Louis Vuitton on my BB. But I'm having second thoughts about that bag, hey? I'm having second thoughts about it, um, especially for the price tag. The fact that it's a canvas bag, it's not even like real leather. And it's the price that it is, is not sitting right in my spirit. So there's that, um, but also uh, it's not my favorite bag, and I feel like if I'm gonna spend like in my I have to spend on, on like I have to spend on a bag I really like. I spend on a bag I really really like. So as a result, I've been looking at other bags. Um, I've been considering the YSL Sunset bag, which is obviously like significantly more expensive than the Alma BB. I think it's like fifty percent more price wise um and if i ship it myself to south africa it's going to be like almost double the price of an alma bb but i thought to myself you know what maybe i should get that one but also I, I spoke about this on my instagram the other day that i'm actually still quite uneasy about the whole idea of purchasing designer so <laughs> long story short and you show and don't be and you show if i'm actually oh that's on her way and you show if i'm actually going to end up making that purchase um but in Dizal born if i do make a designer bag purchase i'm either going to get the ysl sunsets or i'm going to get the pollen numero noof bag which is literally like 20 percent of the cost of the ysl sunsets so if i do get a bag i'll get one of those two um and that will just i guess depend on <laughs> my conscience <laughs> and what i decide to do um hi sis Zizi. how is your weight loss going um <laughs> So when I first started sharing about my weight loss journey here on YouTube a couple of months ago and on Instagram, I specifically asked about declining and boozy unless I decide to share. But long story short, um, my weight loss journey isn't going great. I have lost some weight, to be honest. I have lost some weight and then I gained again. Um, I started my weight loss journey, I think it was like March, April, if I'm not mistaken, it's July now. I started my weight loss journey then and I lost like 12 kgs and then in May my life went <laughs> I think I've mentioned to you guys before I like basically disappeared off YouTube I stopped vlogging completely I was struggling at work there was deaths in the family like there was just a lot going on um so I completely fell off the bandwagon and I fell off the band bandwagon in May and for the whole of June I did gain back some, so I had lost 12 kgs and I gained back four, four, yeah, I gained back four kgs, which is not great, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, and I'm just right now literally fighting for my life to get back, yeah, that's the long and the short of it, it's not going great, I, I would have thought that I would have made so much more progress by now, but that's not the case. Hi Z, how are you finding your neighborhood since moving to your new home? I love the area that we live in. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Actually, let me apply this directly to my face. I absolutely love the area that we live in. Um, I would say maybe the only downside about it is the fact that 
it's very white and not to say that like i don't want to live amongst white people i bought and then queens are going to up oh there we go here it's panicking because this thing is literally still basically full and yet <laughs> even off no puma um it's not to say that i you know dislike living amongst white people that's not the case at all the issue is that we're living in Africa and yet like 90% of our neighborhood is white, which I find extremely problematic. Um, on our like neighborhood WhatsApp group, like for our street, whenever there's like black people that are like walking on the street or taking pictures or whatever, sometimes it's like just kids, like the neighbor's kids or it's like the helpers that work around here. Um, whenever there's black people like, I believe we use the word loitering, around here like the the things that they say on our whatsapp group make me want to scream like they literally make me want to scream they'll be on some there's some strange people there's a strange man walking on the street i'm just like but is it a strange man if it's a white person you know is it like is it okay if i then like make a conclusion about oh Dear, can I call you back? I'm filming a Q&A. Okay, what's it, dear? I'll call you back, sis. What was I saying? What was the question I was answering? Oh, yes, our neighborhood. <laughs> so, I'm enjoying the neighborhood. It's nice. It's well looked after. It's beautiful. It's safe. It's, you know, all these things. But, yeah. Race becomes an issue when black people are a minority in a neighborhood. And I feel like that's the case with my neighborhood. But so grateful to God, you know, for the ability to buy a home, especially in a neighborhood like this. I don't have any regrets about that. I just can't wait until more black people move here. Or just people of color in general. How can you advise a 26-year-old who is deep, deep, who is in deep, deep debt and black tax? Okay. Firstly, I empathize with you, Mdase. <laughs> Trust me. I, on both of those fronts, I completely empathize with you. Um, first word of advice is pursue making more money. Like, and I mean that from the bottom of my heart because guys, like the fastest way to meet your financial goals of like paying off debt, the fastest way to be able to handle expenses, like life expenses, like black tax is to make more money. Like it's literally to make more money. Um, that's not the only thing that you need to do but i do think that's one of the things that we need to be more honest about the fact that it goes a long way it really goes a long way so i would say oba figure out if there's a way that you can make more money and if that requires you to change jobs change jobs change jobs go find another job that's going to pay you more and when you are negotiating for your new salary girl negotiate like your life depends on it Negotiate like your life depends on it. There's a book called Never Split the Difference. Um, if you have a library near you, please check if that book is available. Or okay, you can order it online if you have a budget, probably around 200 rand. And it's about like the art of negotiating. So, yeah. Try to see if there's a way that you can make more money. And typically, um, if you're working in corporate the quickest way to do that is to find a new job. I think it is easier to get a bigger salary by changing jobs than it is to get a bigger salary by asking for a raise or asking for a promotion. So if you can change jobs, change jobs. Number two, I highly recommend living at home um, and not having your own expenses if you are like still paying um, off debt or if you are still contributing towards your family. Because think about it. Isn't it better to rather just be at home and contribute to one grocery bill and contribute to the living expenses of that one household versus having to pay for your own household and then also have to contribute at home? You get what I mean? So I highly recommend, but if your black tax expenses stay home. Stay home, I'm dad say, stay home. Like, I really recommend that. But obviously, like, apply wisdom to that advice as well. Because sometimes when we stay home, we are actually worse off. Because then our families really do have an opportunity to exploit us if that's the type of family that you have. Of which, 
most people don't have families families like that some like most of most people their families love them their families care about their well-being their families don't want to extort them um but obviously if you have a family that is like that you can't stay home but if your family is like understanding and gracious and they're not out here trying to extort you i'd recommend staying home um number three is to downgrade so if it, if for example you are driving a car that you know you cannot realistically afford evaluate how much it would cost you to sell your car and buy a cheap one you know so if for example you're driving like a hyundai i20 I and you're paying like a six thousand rand car installment you could sell it and get a hyundai i10 and pay three thousand rand car installment you know so look at things like that look at what ways in your life can you like realistically um downgrade and, and and like do it so that you can free up money um in your budget but with all of that being said like um i think we must also learn to like be gentle with ourselves and to just understand Kuba, like guys we're living in very difficult financial times we really are yeah be gentle with yourself and just know that like life comes in seasons and paying off debt um is not something that typically happens over a short period of time so don't think Ukuba, like um <clears throat> you can just pay off debt in three months even though like you know your expenses are high you have a single income etc etc um it's a process and that's it like it's really a process so be gentle with yourself and know that like you're not alone so in case so cool, but to varying degrees but honestly so in case so cool. okay <laughs> the time is running away from me yes baby <laughs> i'm filming a q a I, I am i'm going with her she's on her way my love okay, I'm Ooh, I'm yeah? uh, yes please yeah. Yes, please, but it has to be quick. Now yeah, I have to leave in five minutes. Oops, that was almost here. Okay. What's your opinion on getting back with an ex who cheated while you were pregnant? Yo, guys. You know what, ne? That's it. I don't think that I can advise you on this if I'm being all the way honest. I don't think I can because I think that like we all have different deal breakers in relationships we all do and I cannot hold you to what my deal breakers are so that's how you can't hold me to what your deal breakers are in a relationship we pet pass okay let's go for it's done it's fine I'll take it down and I'll come back Mr. Manuku? Babe? Hey. No, that's his office. Oh, Pi. Right. See, I'm my next time or some. We're even late, even. I think there's only two hours left before our movie. Oh, Pi. See, I'm in the middle of Africa. Yes, that's why I booked our movie. Okay. We're in the middle of Africa. Mm. Okay. Love you. Bye, Mokho. Okay, See you later. Cool. What are you doing today? Work. Oh, enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> I was ready to give up on anything and concept. Mercy said no. Sana. I am God is good. I'm not gonna lie. God is good, friend. And the working conditions are you so good. Up? My darling, yeah, our movie is a quarter to four, so I'll probably be back around six just after six seven probably seven then seven, probably. yeah your dinner is in the fridge okay right. cream bye sir all right that was the only thing i wanted when i got this kind of I love me a about, girl with the verpa i knew oh, nothing hand lotion sir it's in my bag okay. i knew nothing about cars when i got this car so come on later you just wanted something i with told her with a sunroof Bella, even a sunroof period <laughs> so time is as I'm later. Let me drive. Are you recording? Hey, hey, everyone. So, like, it's time to shout out to Kanye again. Kanye, is it, that's your colleague? Yeah. Hi, Kanye. What's his name? Oh, oh my God. Hi, okay. Kanye. Girl. Kanye, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. <laughs> I love you. Shout out to you. But I got you your shout out. <laughs>
<laughs> Shout out to you, honey. Thank you for watching my vlogs. I appreciate your presence here. Wait, don't know him being. She loves me. I appreciate your presence here. Thank you for watching. And I hope that you're going to continue to enjoy it. Content with it. Just see. Let me know if you see this. Let me know in the comment section. She will see it. If you see this. <laughs> we are here, Zinlen. Okay. The GPS, the weather is not showing. So friend, how long have you been living? You must be careful because let it is our valet. My friend, my She's Aina friend. Sensa. How long have I been living where? In Joburg and you still don't know how to get to more of Africa. I know from home. I don't know from oh, here. Oh, from here. Okay, makes sense. I think I know. Actually, no, no, no. Right, the, let GPS. me not risk it. GPS. Let me not GPS. risk it. I trust GPS with my life. Okay. So we're going to go and have lunch at Cream. And then... And then we're gonna go watch the Barbie movie. Friend. I had planned for us to go to Tasha's, the Flamingo room at Tasha's. Utaka was like, what we're not gonna do <laughs> is go to Tasha's. <laughs> so yes, I now we're going to cream. I would have ever thought I'd be driving in Joburg. In that fact, friend, like, I'm so happy that you eventually decided to move to Joburg. Why? Because because I remember when I was moving to Joburg, I was like, oh. you were like, I'll never live in Joburg. Because yeah. yeah. didn't you move here before so, I did? Yeah. And, and then, then you moved to Mpumalang. Or since the Lara Tong. Bullish, I'm not bullish, I'm not bullish, I'm not depressed. Where is that? It's in Crooked Street. Oh, Crooked Street. Yeah, Crooked Street. 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 Thing. And you did, you did what? Your internship then? Yeah, I did one month and then I went. One month, friend? After one month, I went. Friend. 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 Um, oh God is good. I well, think about the Lord. God always provides Let for you, friend. You yes, that's what I've noticed in your life. But we are over. Hi, hi, hi. No banga twan sana. I will always defend him. Oh friend. So I got depressed and then um you were friend to a point where I remember calling my sister, yeah? She booked me oh and then my sister's booked me an appointment with a psychiatrist. And then psychiatrist said, I'm like, Yo, hi little dog. We are here, say little dog by and she suggests I go back home because I'm so not gonna survive. Eh, eh. You might to go and work there or just to go be with your family? To transfer back to the Eastern Cape if I could. And luckily for me, there was this guy who was placed in the Eastern Cape who um, who was getting married to a girl. Yes. And it worked out well. We swapped. Oh my goodness. And friends, Daya and Monty. And so so close to home. Yes. And what happened was, I, I initially thought I couldn't be a doctor. I thought I was a bad doctor. I thought I need to quit and go. The profession altogether. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> And then friend, Ndaya, Sana, Emonji, and I realized I'm good, I'm competent. At your job, yeah, yes. yeah. And like, it's in the sense that I was so humane, I was like, people have lunch here, people go home at four here, sure, people, friend. people get assisted, um, um, on my first day, the patient and acute pulmonary edema. Uh, acute pulmonary edema is when there's too much fluid in your lungs and you literally can't breathe and it could kill you. Okay. What do you, I born now you're a doctor, so I got born in Bang Uzo Wenzagan, Uzo Wenzagan is different from me. First day at work. Internship is so that you get supervised and learn how to be a doctor. Yes, yes. Hi, oh, sister. But afterwards, shame, it was smooth sailing. God is good. Like, he redeemed me because I was like, and I feel like they would have stolen, it, that op that moment would have stolen so much from me because mm. I think I'm good at my job. Yeah, yeah. So you went to an Eastern Cape and you finished your internship there and then why are you going to come to Mpumalang? Yeah. And how was it working in Mpumalang? They were lovely. Really? It was great. I missed them. I made um, so many acquaintances that um, I still consider family. Like, I, I still do want to, like, take a trip back to Inklazaj yeah. and just see them. Oh, the women that I worked with um, um, were amazing. They were amazing. I'm not going to lie. Everyone was amazing. So supportive. Mm. And that came after I'd gone by, oh, you're over. I don't know who's events, you know. Well, I'll get a rest. Yeah. And I got... Got rest for my soul. Oh, you friend. <laughs> and then now I'm still like I'm in a job that is just peaceful and happy, good, like good work environment. We are over, guys. Oh, friend. Are you recording? Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing, honey. Tell me what your name is Tell me what you like
Breaking all your secrets I just wanna go over the details Let me inside of your mind I know I just met you But something tells me that you might be into Talking to a stranger with a tattoo Baby, I'm one of a kind There's a reason we're here There's a fire in the air That I thought you and me could deny Well, I see how you stare up and down everywhere I can tell you're far from shy So let's talk till we drop Or till we get kicked out Let's just say what we want Kids, just rich kids in general. They just found a number. They had cars. Some of them, some of them, they were Kobe Mercedes. Then they were Kobe Vrpang. Kobe from Kagata. Some of them, in fact, from Kagata, they can't even drive. Your father's dream car. This life thing, no balance, sissy. Sana. Okay, let's go. Let's go home, darling. What's the time? Six o'clock. Okay, it's not bad. Seven to seven or eight. No one's allowed on midnight now. But you know what? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get into like comfy pajamas, and I'm gonna edit in bed. Yeah. So at least it doesn't feel like doesn't feel like in the end. Yeah. When I sit in bed, Sham, it it soothes me. Sometimes when I'm having a really bad week, I'm sitting in. I'll take my laptop and work in my bed. And it's better. And it feels better. Your bed is the least threatening environment in the world. Safe space. I agree. I totally agree. I get some lift stuff. Sure. Overthinking, I feel like I'm too much Keep mistaking my anxiety for intuition And stress keeps getting in the way of my ambition Logically, I know I shouldn't feel this way Show. 
I think I started this vlog over a week ago, if I'm not mistaken. So I'm gonna finish off that q and Remember on Sunday, excuse me, on Sunday when I went um, out for the Barbie movie with Ukata, um, I was doing a QA while I was doing my makeup. I wanna finish that QA. I'm um, not finish it, but like do a little bit more um, before I close off this vlog. It might take a while, so I thought, let me actually do my skincare, my nighttime skincare while I do it. I'm going to be doing my anti-aging skincare routine and these are the products that I use in my anti-aging routine okay so this question says I can't even remember what was the last question that I did was I can't remember if I didn't finish it I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry um, but yeah, I just moved on to like another question because I can't remember what the other question was and there's so many questions here. But this question says, how has my standy life been treating you? Um, <laughs> so this is a copper, hold on, focus. This is a copper peptide serum. This is my first step. Um, so my standy life has been good, guys. For those of you who don't know what my standy is, my standy is like a land order. Or land owner rather actually yeah to land owner of a landlord. Um my family life has been great guys. So we bought our house about we bought it maybe about 14, 15 months ago, but we only moved in here about 12 months ago. So we moved in here like end of July, beginning of August last year, and it's like beginning of August now. So yeah, we've been living here for about a year and it has been good. Deborah and I both absolutely love this house. We have got no regret about this house. And honestly, like for the season that we are in in our lives right now, this is the, the house of our dreams. This is quite literally the house of our dreams. And I'm so grateful to God that we were able to buy the house of our dreams and it was still like, it was still possible for it to like fit in our budget, you know? But with all that being said, uh, owning a home comes with its challenges <laughs> and those challenges are many aside from like having to pay a bond property taxes levies um electricity obviously um aside from all of those costs of like owning a home those monthly costs of owning a home there's also the fact that when things go wrong in your own house it's on you baby it's on you to pay and there's nobody who's gonna come like to your rescue there's literally no one who's gonna come to your rescue. If your geezer, in fact, our geezer was broken, one of our geezers was broken, we had to cough up like 2,500 rand to fix that. Literally just last week, um, our, <laughs> our lights outside in the backyard are broken, we had to fix that. Our electric fence, like on the perimeter of the house wasn't working, my husband had to deal with that. Like, like everything that goes wrong, our toilet downstairs, like in the powder room, it was not flashing. Well, it was flashing, but it was like leaking every time you flash. That's on you. Everything, everything is on you when you're a homeowner. So it comes with those challenges. And then, um, but aside from that, like it's really fulfilling. We're really happy that we're like dumping our money into like 
an asset that we're going to be able to like fully own. It's not going to be owned by the bank one day and we'll be able to pass it down to our children. You know, it's going to form part of our estate that we'll pass down to our children. Um, if we do end up buying a bigger home than this in the future, we'll probably use this to generate rental income or we'll sell it. I don't know. Probably not sell it though, but we'll see. We'll see. We don't know what the future holds. Um, so it's nice. It's nice, but you know, all good things come with, <laughs> come with their challenges. Um, second step is my favorite retinol in the world. This is a retinol that had, I really like the serum because I feel like it does the job, but it doesn't irritate my skin. And I found a lot of retinols to be like pretty, there we go, to be like pretty irritating to my skin. And this one does not irritate my skin in the slightest bit. Oh, sorry, next question. I need to move on. <laughs> I'm literally probably only gonna be able to answer three questions. What has adulthood taught you that you thought you knew but didn't really comprehend? That life is really hard. That yes, like as you make more money, like having more and more money in your adulthood does make certain aspects of life a little bit easier. But guys, like life is hard everywhere. Everybody's life is hard. Well, at least the people in my life. Um, and I think I've just been shocked at just how difficult life actually is. How difficult it actually is to like achieve your goals. How difficult it is to like stay on top of things, going to church, corporate job, running a business, you know, maintaining friendships, maintaining family relationships, investing in your marriage. Like, although those things are all like fulfilling and rewarding, they're hard as hell, let me tell you. Hard as hell. Hard as hell. So I think that's one thing I, I don't think I had a proper appreciation for was just how difficult life like actually is. I plan to buy a wedding band or you're just fine with your ring. So I have an engagement ring. Um, let me get it actually one second. So this is the ring that my husband bought me maybe almost three years ago now. This was my engagement ring. I had always planned to get a wedding band to go with it, but I actually really like this look. <laughs> I really, really like this look. It's not even focusing here. I really, really like this look. Like, I really, really like it. I feel like it suits my style. I'm a very, like, simplistic kind of girl. So I really, really like my ring. Um, will I get a wedding band? Probably not. Probably not, but I don't know. From time to time, I think about it, but every time I think to myself, yo, because I think the last time I tried to get a quote, they quoted us like 10k. I was like, ucha, ucha. And also, I feel like I have to get it from the same jeweler who made this because I want, um, if I if I do get a wedding band, I want it to match like this gold that I have here. And he quoted me like 10k. I was like, yo, oh man, man. It's nangy, it's nangy. <laughs> what made you decide to transition your relaxed hair and how has it been maintaining it? So the reason why I decided to transition back to, nat to natural hair is because my relaxed hair was giving got demands. Um, yeah, that's honestly the reason. Um, I also noticed that with relaxed hair, I struggled a lot with the dry scalp. Like with dandruff and stuff. Um, which which I did have a little bit of those issues even with my natural hair, but it wasn't as severe I have dry skin like in general But I feel like my the dry skin on my scalp is like so much worse than the dry skin on my face and When with relaxing my hair, I mean I found that my skin Like although I wouldn't burn at the salon when I get a relaxer my skin sana oh charm um, Yeah, so it's it's mainly the thinness the the flaky scalp that was annoying me um and also the breakage but i would probably say like 80 percent of the reason was the thinness of the hair maintaining it has been very difficult i'm not even gonna lie to you that's why i'm like always in the sewing <laughs> i love from the fact that i like sewing and i like this texture of hair but that's the main reason why i do sewing is because i'm trying to like just keep my hair away without having to lay awake because i don't like laying awake to be quite honest okay next question is what made or influenced you to choose what you chose at varsity um <laughs> to be honest with you i chose my degree because i wanted to make money i actually went to varsity i think i've mentioned this to you but guys before i chose um I, when i went to varsity i went to go study actuarial science i did it for two years in Gahulega. but the only reason i chose to go to axi is because i could or i just i thought i could i was good at maths i was good at ap maths and i just wanted to make money 
That's literally, well, that was my motivation. Is that I just needed and wanted to make money. Um, the next product is this Eucerin face cream. Ooh, Aquaporin, Old Faithful, um, Lorna. So, so got both there. Oh, she my husband. Hey guys, get you a man who's gonna communicate. So he just takes me, he said he's not coming home now because he's going to have coffee with one of the guys from church. Um, okay, advice you'd give Zizi who was starting out as a content creator with all you know now. Okay, I think first and foremost, I would have advised myself to take this seriously a little bit earlier, and I don't think I did that. I don't think I'll do that. I think when I first joined social media, and mind you guys, I've been on social media since like 2019. Um, I think I only really started taking it seriously, maybe like in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I'm lying. 2021. Yeah, end of 2021, beginning of 2022. That's when I started to like take it seriously. I thought to myself, okay, so I can actually look, make good money out of this. I can build a career out of this. Um, but initially when I joined, I literally joined and it was just nothing but a hobby. It was literally nothing but a hobby. Um, so I, I think I would tell myself to take this seriously as soon as I can. Um, so by taking it seriously, I mean like, Create content. Create content, especially on Instagram and TikTok. Because guys, let me just be like fully honest and fully transparent with you. If you're going to be a content creator um, and you want to live like a middle class lifestyle or like even upper middle class lifestyle, YouTube is not going to be enough. Let me tell you. YouTube might help you pay your rent, you know, well, depending on where you stay actually. But if you have like an apartment, maybe like a two bedroom apartment in the suburbs, like middle class suburbs. You could pay a rent with your YouTube AdSense, maybe you could also pay a car installment, but even then like, you need to be getting good views. <laughs> you need to be getting good views even to just be able to pay your rent and your car installment. Um, but I don't think you can like properly live like a good middle class lifestyle from AdSense. I don't think it's possible. Um, even when I look at like some of the girls that earn like the best on AdSense in South Africa, even they say, oh, but guys, I'm like YouTube. It's decent, yes, but you can make so much more money in corporate. <laughs> you can make so much more money in corporate. So yeah, um, anyways, back to what I was actually saying is that if you, if I'm being honest with you guys, when it comes to social media, Instagram, and TikTok, especially Instagram in the South African context, is where the money resides. That is where the money resides because you can like post four videos in a month on YouTube, right? And make a certain amount of accents. I promise you, my dear, you can post one reel, like a paid reel on Instagram and make your entire month's accents. And one reel, like, I think the longest one reel has taken me to shoot is maybe like eight hours. You like eight hours, you can shoot a reel and then spend, and that's like a really complicated reel. Like reels don't have to be that complicated. You can, you can make reels in like two to three hours. And, I, and, and like most of my reels probably take me about three hours, maybe four to film. Um, and then maybe another four hours to edit. So like a full day of work, you can create a reel, right? And you can make your entire month's AdSense from that one reel. So yeah, like Instagram is literally where the money resides. Like, it, yeah, <laughs> I would say take it seriously like as soon as you can um, and put most of your energy and your focus on Instagram. I do think YouTube is valuable, especially if you're going to be a vlogger or you're going to be like, going to be doing, sorry, God, I keep looking at the viewfinder. But if you're going to be a vlogger or you're going to be doing like educational esque content, I think that YouTube is valuable because YouTube helps you to build a relationship with your community. It, it shows like the human aspect of who you are. And I think it also helps to build a more engaged audience, right? But you cannot look at YouTube as a way to make money. Like, especially if you want to make good money. If you make good money, you can't look at YouTube as, as that. YouTube is for like satisfying your creative like desires. It's for making your audience happy, giving back to, to your audience, and like engaging with your audience basically. Um yeah, it's not it's not a way to make money. Um secondly, I would say like when you can invest financially into your content, so like get lights. 
get a camera, get an, get an iPhone or just like a good, a good phone with a good camera. Um, so for example, if you um, have 30,000 Rand to spare, like I would say don't buy an Alma BB, like invest in a camera and lights. You know, you know what I mean? Because the investment that you make into social media, if it works out, like you will make so much more than what you actually put in um, in terms of the financial investment. You know what I mean? Get yourself a laptop to edit, buy editing software, but also like don't overextend yourself in that department. Because another thing I've also learned is that you need to find a sweet spot. You know, I'm, I'm the type of person who would love to like upgrade my camera every single year, but financially it doesn't make sense. So for example, my dream camera right now is an EOS R6 right for and i want that camera mainly for instagram content but that camera is like fifty thousand rand and i feel like for where i am in my content creation i know i'll make that money back you know from content creation but where i am in my content creation journey it doesn't make sense for me to spend that amount of money on a camera you know what i mean i'm still using like the same equipment that i bought like two years ago and my equipment cost me like 40k like in total my both my lenses, my camera, my lights, like everything in, inclusive, um, cost me like okay, maybe like sixty k, including my laptop, right? So I invested like sixty thousand rand into like my content creation equipment, and I've been using this equipment for like well over two years now, two and a half years. My laptop I've been using for the past four years, um, and I want to upgrade, but I don't think it's worth it right now because I'm still not making good enough money to justify a fifty thousand rand camera. You get what I mean? Um, yeah, but then again, you know, someone you could make the argument of like, no, but you know, you have to first invest in the business before you can expect to get any money out of it. But on the, and although I think that's true, um, it's very tricky when agencies are offering you like this amount of money and you're using your iPhone and then you go and buy a, a, a thingy, a 50,000 rand camera and those agencies still offer you the same amount of money. Then what is the point? <laughs> Um, and I've also realized that like, as I've upgraded my, my equipment as well, it hasn't really changed the amount of money that these brands are offering. Um, yeah, so I, I think you must find a sweet spot, invest, but find a sweet spot. Don't overextend yourself, but do what is like required. Yeah. Um, another thing I would say is like, educate yourself about how campaigns work, how to price, etc., etc. And to be honest, I've been doing campaigns now for like a year and a half and I'm still trying to figure it out. Like I'm still, still, still trying to figure it out. Um, and, and it takes a while. Like it takes a while for you to one, figure out how you should charge, two, figure out um, what to say no to. Because sometimes like, like I've had agencies, for example, who have come to me and like to put me in a campaign and they... Um, are willing to pay for like me to do th the content, but then they're not they, they want me to be exclusive to them and to also like um, To also give them usage and then they don't want to pay for it Like they don't want to pay a cent for it and I've had to walk away from like really big brands and really big campaigns because I'm just like I am the sales lender you want me to do content for you. You're willing to pay my rate, yes, but you want me to stay exclusive to you. In other words, I can't make any more money, but you're not willing to compensate me for the risk that I'm taking on by signing an exclusivity contract with you, you know? And it took me a long time to come to that point of courage of being able to say to a brand, well, thank you so much for considering me, but I'm going to have to pass on this opportunity. Maybe we can work together in the future when you have budget for exclusivity. You know, it took a long time for me to be able to like say that confidently, but I think I'm at that point, you know, um, and to be honest, I still kind of struggle. I still kind of struggle because literally agencies will say, but it's, it's bizarre to us that you would expect to be paid for, um, exclusivity. It's bizarre. It's so strange. We've never had to pay for usage and yet you're out here asking for usage, you know, and you don't, you never know like who's telling you the truth, you know? Um, so I think it helps to like talk to other people in the industry and like get the know-how, get information, ask people questions, be willing to share information as well um, to help other girls along on, on their own path. Yeah. Good <laughs> luck, dead. Guys, there's a campaign that I thought I wasn't going to get because um, I thought I priced too high. 
I just got the email for that campaign. Praise God. Praise God. Um, did you do see it? Okay, actually, I'm still doing my skincare. Okay, <laughs> last step is this uh, barrier oil. This is like a squalene barrier oil. Um, and this is like the final step of my nighttime skincare routine. This is just to help lock in all the product and so that my face doesn't get dry. And honestly, like when I use this barrier oil, I wake up with like such soft skin you must just be careful not to overdo it though with this product <laughs> you must be careful because otherwise you will end up looking like a grease ball let me just tell you for free you will end up looking like a grease ball that is the final step of my skincare routine well actually i have one more step which is like stuff i feel like what that did yeah this is the final step Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream. Demo faithful came like you guys to this thing. And I'm not gonna stop using it until I find something better. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop using it until I find something better. And although this thing is really pricey, I think it's like 300 and something. I try to buy it when it's on sale, either at Clicks or on Take a Lot or on Superbalist. I try to buy it during the sales. It's, oh. Um but either way, even if I don't buy one, it's not on sale. I literally only buy this thing twice, Ooh, twice, maybe three times a year. Usually twice, though. maybe three times, maybe three times. It typically lasts me about five months. Yeah, five months. Okay, I'll answer like maybe two or three more questions and then we're going to call it a day. Um, where is the best place to get a sew in? Okay, so there's three salons that I, that I can like very confidently recommend. Studio 353 in Ravonia. Um, love that salon. Love it so much. I do think they are overpriced. That's my only qualm with them because I think to do my sew in, I paid like 1250 Yeah, I, I think they're terribly overpriced. Um, and I get discouraged a lot of the time to go do my hair there because they're just so expensive. I get a legs at nine feet. Yeah. Um, so, but, but they're good. Like my hairdresser, Ubozi. And her husband as well. In fact, in fact, you know what? The one thing about Studio 353, guys, is that no matter what hairdresser you get there, excellent. Those people, guys, are so good at doing hair. It's actually insane. Like, I have never had salon experiences like at Studio 353. They are the best. Like, of all the salons I have ever tried, they are the best. And I love the fact that they're good with natural hair and they're good with relaxed hair. Like, regardless of what type of hair you have, if you are a black girl, you're going to be taken care of in a pair and your hair will be healthy. Um, but the second salon that I would recommend is Renee Debut. I hope I'm pronouncing it properly, but that is Deborah's salon. It's also expensive, but not like Studio 353. And I also feel like it's like just as good or maybe close. I think, I think it's just as good or like a close second, you know? If I were to give Studio 353 100 out of 100, I'd give Renee Debut like 98 out of 100. And I recommend uh, Renee Debut whether you have relaxed hair or you have natural hair. Chef's kiss, chef's, chef's, chef's kiss. And then the third one, I think it's called Ruth Hair Salon. It's in Bryanston. And the hairdresser that I like is Ooh, Urosta. Don't let anybody else in that salon do your hair except Urosta. Except Urosta. Don't let anybody else. This is all I'm going to say. Don't let anybody else there do your hair except Urosta. Um, Urosta is amazing. She does great sew-ins. She does great... Like anything to do with extensions. Chef's kiss. Like chef's kiss. So yeah. Those are my three... Three favorite salons studio 353 renee debut ruth hair salon and studio 353 anybody can do your hair there my favorite girl is ubosi second favorite would be her husband i forgot his name but to be honest you don't have to get those two i've had different people at studio 353 do, do my hair and all of them are excellent excellent Number two, Renee Debut. My favorite girl there is Upriti. But similar with Studio 353, all the hairdressers at Renee Debut guys are good. Like bonky. But I do think Upriti is the best. Number three, Ruth Hair Salon. The only girl I will let touch my hair at Ruth Hair Salon is Urosta. Okay, this question says, when you start renovations, are you going to make a YouTube series about it? 
Yes and no. So I will definitely share on my YouTube and my Instagram when I start my renovations process. Um, but I don't know if I'll make it like a, a series. I think I'll just vlog it as I go because I, I highly doubt my renovations are going to happen like all at once where I can make like six episodes and this is going to be like the renovation series. I think my home improvement projects, renovations, furniture are just going to be a part of my life as I go. Um, so I'll probably like mix it into my vlog when I do my bathroom, when I do my floors, when I buy a new bed, new couches, new fridge, etc, etc. I'm just going to insert it in the vlogs as I go. I don't think I'll have like specifically a renovation series, if that makes sense. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this vlog. I'm going to end it here. I really appreciate you being part of this family. If you haven't already, please click, click the subscribe button down below. Um, and the notification bell if you'd like to know when I upload new videos. I appreciate your presence here. Let's connect on Instagram. I'm a little, I'm a little bit more active over there. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Bye.